All right, good morning. We're going to see how well I multitask with multiple screens. Um, thank you so much for joining in this session. Uh, as mentioned, my name is Samantha Fritz. I am the project manager for Archives Unleashed. And for the past six years, our team has worked closely with librarians, archivists, technologists, developers, uh, and scholars to tackle the challenges encountered when conducting research with web archives at scale. And so today I'd like to share with you our team's experience in engaging with scholars uh, to, to build scalable analytical tools and in delivering a mentorship program. And in both instances, we've uncovered opportunities that support access, exploration, and engagement with web archival data. So we start our conversation about the web and as information curators and creators, uh, we can recognize the web as a reflection of society. And it's shaped this global climate of how we connect with one another and how we interact with information. We've witnessed um, international efforts of institutions and organizations, many of whom are represented here at IAPC, um, to consciously preserve critical and ephemeral data. And putting on my Ian Milligan hat here, I will say that web archive collections play a critical role for scholars studying the 1990s onwards um, and provide this rich research context both in scope and scale. But web archives by and large still remain this untapped resource. And I think that we can look at a number of acute challenges that our research communities face from the avail availability of analytical tools, um, community infrastructure, inaccessible and technical burdensome interfaces, and of course, time and resource constraints that we all feel. And so all of these together uh, present a high barrier to conducting research with web archives. Now for uh, collectors and researchers alike, many in this audience can probably attest to the messy and complex nature of the work fi uh, file format um, and the challenges that scale present. Um, and I'm going to pause here just a moment to really emphasize a note about scale because in our team's experience with um, especially research consultation, it's demonstrated that the scale of web archives is very much underestimated. And that is, of course, until you try downloading a 180 gigabyte file or you have to create a 10% sample of a data set because, yes, 11 million lines does break Excel. And these are both true stories. And so altogether, this is the context in which the Archives Unleashed project has grown. We have a ton of data. It's messy and complex. It can be very difficult to work with unless you have an understanding of computational analysis. And there's really limited options when we talk about user-friendly tools uh, that can handle scale. And so the underlying goal of our work has been to lower these barriers and these burdens to access and use of web archives with a twofold approach to build tools and community engagement. Over our project's lifespan, we've created tools and approaches to help address some of these technical complexities. Uh, so during the first phase of our project from uh, 2017 to 2020, uh, our team really focused on developing open source tools uh, to conduct scalable analysis. So during this time, we built the Archives Unleashed Toolkit, and as some here might fondly remember, AUK or the Archives Unleashed Cloud. And these tools presented these new opportunities for researchers to investigate and analyze web archives. And on the community uh, engagement front of things, our team has hosted series of uh, datathons for skills development um, and also to foster this sense of belonging, and dare I say, some emotional support um, through these mini collaborative projects. Now in our second phase and very quickly coming to the end of our project, um, we've seen a maturing of these tools and community, uh, community building endeavors. So in partnership with the Internet Archive, our tool roster now includes a stable 1.2 release of the toolkit. Um, and we also have the Arch platform, or the Archives Research Compute Hub, which is in beta, and we're uh, very pleased to share a release with this shortly. Um, in both instances, we happily deliver to the community these approachable and powerful opportunities to investigate web archives at scale. Um, and this is done where scholars can generate research objects or what we like to think of as data sets on these collections. 
One other area of development uh, that we've seen great success with is some experimental notebooks that uh, have been created by one of our project members, Nick Rue. Um, and so it's through these Google Colab notebooks that we've been able to demonstrate very typical analytical functions uh, that can then be applied to these generated data sets. Um, and they've been especially helpful for researchers as a starting point, um, digging into their web archive collections um, and, and creating more complex analysis methods on them. Now, I do want to acknowledge here that our tool development has been the result of efforts and close collaborations from not only our project team and partners at the Internet Archive, but also from broader communities and individuals that we've engaged with, including librarians, archivists, technologists, collection curators, um, and researchers from many different disciplines. Um, and all of these voices combined have really um, influenced the shape and the design of our tools. Supplementary to our tool building efforts, our team has expanded on the foundations of community engagement activities uh, by supporting Web Archives research in a more intensive way than our Datathon series uh, really allowed for. And this is realized through the development of the Archives Unleashed cohorts. So we've delivered um, two iterative cycles of this mentorship program, which has been designed to facilitate intensive research engagement with Web Archives, uh, foster a community of users, and cultivate a broad spectrum of research use cases across disciplines and fields. Um, the Archives Unleashed cohort program has engaged with 46 interdisciplinary researchers from across 21 institutions um, around the world. And this program itself is a year-long collaborative process where five research teams use Web Archives as a primary data source um, to investigate wide-ranging research topics that they have. During their time in the program, participants receive uh, technical support, and they also receive mem uh, mentorship from members of our team and field experts. Uh, we've also hosted a number of different events to encourage peer-to-peer -peer support uh, and knowledge sharing. Cohort researchers have also participated as our pilot users for ARCH, um, which has not only helped streamline their research, uh, research process because they can uh, generate these data sets and then explore them more broadly through um, other tools and methods, um, but they've also really helped implement uh, a lot of the development choices that we've made for ARCH. So really it's uh, a research tool that has been essentially created by researchers for researchers. And so as we reflect on this uh, theme of the session, access and research within the context of web archiving, I'd like to highlight the ways in which our mentorship program has cultivated an environment that empowers these opportunities to support access, exploration, and engagement with research data, specifically web archives. So if you can't access data, you're not going to use it. And this is a challenge that is felt across disciplines. Um, since our cohort program saw international participation, bridging that gap between research teams and the data that would support their research questions was a critical first step. And so in partnership with the Internet Archive, as well as collaborating with specific um, Archivet partners, these cohort teams were given read access to Web Archive collections, um, and then they were able to analyze those collections through the ARCH platform. Building these, re, uh, these relationships and connections um, was essential, uh, especially given um, the wide range of access that each team had. So in some instances, we had teams who belonged to collecting institutions, and in fact, um, we had a number of teams whose uh, either web archivist or, or person who had curated the web archive collection um, was directly on the team. Um, but then there was also a recognition that there were some folks coming to this program who had absolutely no affiliation with either um, uh, an archivist subscription or with web archiving. Um, and they were very keen to explore already established collections. And so I think when we take a look at the cohort program 
um, as a whole, it really highlights this initial challenge um, that confronts all researchers. And that's where am I going to find the data I need to investigate my research topics, and how can I access this? Um, and I think that that's a very unique part of uh, the cohort program in that we were able to build those connections, not only to the data, but then um, help foster uh, folks in their research process and access accessing that data. As we talk about supporting the exploration of web archives, I really have to commend all of the teams that have participated in our program um, and the openness that all members uh, brought to experimenting with new approaches and methods. Um, researchers here really expanded outside of their comfort zones um, and they embraced many uh, through the looking glass moments or these instances where things seemed unfamiliar yet recognizable. The majority of our researchers participating in the program were new to working with web archive data, um, and many also had limited experiences in using large-scale analytical methods. And so our project members actively worked to create this environment where users could feel empowered um, to pursue their curiosity and to experiment with web archives. Um, and so in this respect, we really focused on skill building and knowledge sharing. Uh, so, for instance, we regularly used our one-on-one -on -one meetings with teams um, to address technical challenges, to share resources, um, and certainly consult on some of their analysis strategies. We've also hosted different events and spaces that support peer-to-peer -peer learning. Um, so, for example, we've done on-the-fly tutorials with teams on how to use command line, um, how to create basic and customized Python scripts, uh, we've shared GitHub spaces where folks can share the code that they're um, using in the hopes that uh, collectively um, solutions can be found where uh, people are running into um, roadblocks. And so collectively, um, you know, our team and cohorts have shared a bunch of different resources and tools um, that really speak to a broad skill set from novice to advanced users, and they include tools like Google Colab, Gephi, um, Python, Voyant, uh, GitHub Spaces, as I mentioned, um, and something that we found really useful um, for those first kind of entering into the world of web archives is Melanie Walsh's Cultural Analytics and Python Textbook. And so by empowering these users to explore data in new ways, whether it's using new methods or tools, um, we found that researchers really could play with the data and explore, um, explore it in meaningful ways. And so this brings us to opportunities to support engagement with web archives. As cohort were required to explore one or more web archive collections, um, we certainly supported the engagement between researchers and collection curators. And so for researchers, this has been valuable in gaining contextualized knowledge, um, and we've also seen uh, quite a bit of curiosity and interest from partners in seeing how their collections are being incorporated into research. So for instance, we've had quite a bit of interest from groups in understanding the decision-making process. Um, so you know, what's included and excluded uh, within a collection and, and the reasoning behind that. Um, and overall, the cohort program, or sorry, the cohort projects have explored 44 web archive collections from 23 Archivet partners. And it's also been a rewarding experience for us to help bring more visibility to institutional collections, highlighting not only you know, what specific collections are being used, but also showcasing the possibilities of web archives research um, through different use cases, uh, and of course, sharing results from those groups. So for instance, the work done by Timur Barak and his collaborators at Brock University, um, they investigated crisis communication during the pandemic from a very regional perspective. Um, so specifically how organizations in the Niagara region in Canada uh, responded to government COVID-19 mandates. And so not only uh, did the team apply a very mixed method approach to investigating uh, their Brock University collection, um, some of which are identified um, on this slide. Um, they've also uh, gone further and built curriculums to support and advance computational research of web archives um, and pedagogical 
methodology, um, specifically looking at the undergraduate classroom. And we've also seen projects uh, that are great examples of tackling very large multilingual collections like the AWAC2 group, uh, some of whom are presenting here as well. Um, and they explored the IPC COVID collection um, to really dig into um, transnational events to understand representative with, uh, representativeness within the web archive um, and apply some, some different scalable reading methods uh, to explore themes related to women and gender. And so as we continue to share uh, cohort projects experiences um, and use cases, I really encourage you to think about, you know, the research questions that you're grappling with and envision whether web archival data could provide additional context. I can't speak to every single one of these projects. They are all wonderful and fantastic. Um, so I really do encourage you to check out uh, our project site that gives a little bit more of description um, and some of the blog posts that we've um, featured. We do have quite a few more highlights um, planned for June uh, as our second group of cohorts wrap up. Um, but I really do hope that this presentation has sparked some inspiration uh, to experimenting with web archives in your own research or um, in helping the patrons that you work with. Now, fun fact about me, I've been doing martial arts for over 20 years. And as one of the greatest lessons that I've learned and that I share with students is this idea that when we are uncomfortable or struggling to learn something new that's generally when we tend to grow the most. And I think that this is uh, equally applicable to Web Archives research and something that we've certainly seen um, among our cohorts that regardless of your skill set, your knowledge, your experience, there's always going to be these moments where you feel overwhelmed or frustrated, certainly, um, because things do seem, uh, seem unfamiliar. But we can also recognize that this learning opportunity um, can come when we embrace the unknown and being uncomfortable. And so I conclude here by circling back to the theme of this session, research and access. Um, and I'd propose that a mentorship model, whether it's something formalized like the Archives and Leash cohorts, um, or you know, something more organically, uh, just like peer-to-peer -peer collaboration, that those models in combination with strategies that are rooted with community engagement and research support, um, that we can cultivate these extraordinary opportunities to expand access, use, and engagement with web archives. And so with that, thank you guys so much. <laughs>